Good day to you. This is Pastor Joey Pagadora, and thank you for joining us today in Senior Moments to Remember. It is a pleasure to have you join us, and we're looking forward to 30 minutes of a wonderful time praising the Lord together, praying together, and reading His Word. And before we continue, we'd like to ask if you have any prayer requests, please type them in the comment section below, and we will be praying for you. Or if you just want to say hi, please let us know where you're at. We would love to hear from you. Let's open in prayer. Father, thank you so much for your goodness. Thank you so much, O Lord, for your love, for my brother, for my sister. Thank you for your presence that you will bless us with. And we ask God, let, Lord, your touch be upon their bodies. Let your touch be upon their hearts. Let them experience your reality, even at this time, as we get together and enjoy your presence. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's come to the presence of God and worship Him. Good morning! Come and join me in worshiping our wonderful God. Moments to remember Moments to remember The righteous will flourish like a palm tree They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon Moments to remember Moments to remember Planted in the house of the Lord They will flourish in the cause of our God they will still bear fruit in old days. They will stay fresh and free to proclaim the Lord is our God. He's my rock and there's no wickedness in me. Always remember, always remember. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Always remember.
Blessed day to you. This is Pastor Joey and this is your wow moment, wow meaning words of wisdom. And we know that wisdom is important to you because you have lived it. You have proven it and now you are enjoying the fruit of wisdom in your life. Our wow moment for today is a continuation of what Paul has been teaching Timothy and we're looking at principles that you can teach your next generations in the family. So let's read 1 Timothy chapter 6 starting in verse 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world, and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing, with these we will be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evils, it is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs. Now, we've often heard it said that money is the root of all evil, but it's actually not a correct thought. It is not money that is the root of all evil, but it is the love of money that is the root of all evil. And Paul is teaching young Timothy about this truth. Paul is also teaching Timothy that it is a great gain in life. It is a great wealth in life to have godliness and contentment. Other parts of scripture also teaches about being content. And being content is a key so that we will be free from the love of money. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 ESV. Keep your life from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. In the New Living Translation, don't love money, be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you, I will never abandon you. In the New American Standard Bible, it says, let your character be free from the love of money, being content with what you have, for he himself has said, I will never desert you, nor will I ever forsake you. You see, when you are content, and when your soul is free from this love of money, then you don't fall into the harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction, as scripture says. When, when your, your soul, your heart is free from the love of money, then you will not fall into temptation, into snare. You will be living a life that is content. Contentment is not about how much you have. Contentment is about being happy with what you currently have, knowing that God will always be with you, knowing that God will bless you and will add more to your life as you put him first. Being happy in your heart is great wealth in itself. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 6, it says, Yet true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. It's not something that you can buy. It's not something that you can acquire. Contentment is something that's in your heart. Proverbs 17 verse 22 ESV, A joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Being happy with what you have, it is good medicine. In the New Living Translation, it says, A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit saps a person's strength. When you are content and you are happy with what you have, you have energy and you have energy to work. And because you work, God blesses the work of your hands. On the other hand, when there is envy, when a person is not content and they're always looking at what other people have. On the other hand, when a person is not content and is misled and is destroyed by the longful desires, the desires that destroy him because of the love of money, he dries up and his strength goes away. So as you move on in life, be content. Be happy with what you have. Knowing that God will never leave you, he will never forsake you, and he will continue to bless the work with your hands, and that blessing in the work of your hands will always bring you strength. So stay content. Find contentment in God, and know that he is the God who blesses you. This has been one moment, and our prayer for you is that as you continue in wisdom, the days, the weeks, the months, and the years ahead of you will even be more fruitful. God bless you.
Hello, wonderful exemplars! This is Pastor Paula and welcome to another Sababa Moment. Today, we will continue our journey to the Kidron Valley. So, known in scripture only as the Brook Kidron, the Kidron Valley runs north to south between the Mount of Olives and the eastern wall of the Temple Mount. The 20-mile long stretch naturally descends 4,000 feet and tapers off into the Dead Sea. Originally filled by the Gihon Spring, the flow of water in the valley was eventually diverted through the construction of complex water supply systems during the Canaanite and Israelite periods. The Kidron Valley was traversed by many notable biblical figures, including David, who was described crossing the brook barefoot and weeping while fleeing from Absalom in 2 Samuel 15, and even Jesus himself crossed the valley to meet with his disciples in John 18, chapter 1, verse 2. It is also the place believed to be where Jesus was tempted by Satan to jump, Matthew chapter 4 verse 8 during his testing in the wilderness the valley is also the home to the garden of Gethsemane where Jesus prayed the night before his crucifixion the northern valley also known as the biblical king's valley mentioned in Genesis 14 sees the most foot traffic given its proximity to strategic sites in Jerusalem. Visitors are free to walk the white stone path into the heart of the valley to view the scores of olive trees and 2,000-year-old monuments which face the Temple Mount. And we will talk more about the Kidron Valley but for today. Let us read from 2 Kings chapter 23 verse 12 to 14 and we are going to read it in the New International Version. And it says here, he pulled down the altars the kings of Judah had erected on the roof near the upper room of Ahaz, and the altars Manasseh had built in the two courts of the temple of the Lord. He removed them from there, smashed them into pieces, and threw the rubble into the Kidron Valley. The king also desecrated the high places that were east of Jerusalem, on the south of the hill of corruption the ones solomon king of israel had built for ashtoreth the vile goddess of sidonians for chemosh the vile god of moab and for molech the detestable god of the people of ammon josiah smashed the sacred stones and cut down the asherah poles and covered the sites with human bones so this passage was the time when uh, King Josiah ruled over Judah. And as we all know, Josiah was a righteous king. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. And the first thing that he did was to clean the house of God, the house of the Lord. He threw all things, idols, stuff that keeps God's people away from him. You know, like idols and other things. And just like king josiah as we look at this passage we should throw away or like avoid the things that will keep us away from our relationship with god keep us away from the lord or that hinders us to worship god because as christians god will always be first and foremost in our lives now that is sababa Thank you so much, exemplars, for your time and for listening to another Sababa lesson today. I hope to see you again next time. This is Pastor Paula. God bless you. Bye! Moments to remember. to read to you Psalms 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my purpose, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the power's name and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. And his faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. 
You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalk in the darkness, nor the plagues that destroy at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the Most High your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you, no disaster will come near your tent. For He will command His angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. He will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Good morning! Welcome to Golden R. I'm Pastora Babes. It's time to sing along with me. Come on, let's sing. I want to be more like you.
coordinate for C, praise his name with dancing, accompanied by tambourine and harp. Come and dance along. With all joy, now I overflow with hope. In the Holy Ghost. What a joy to be with you today. Stay fit for service. God bless. Moments to remember. Good day. This is Pastor Latin and welcome once again to our prayer time. Thank you so much for always allowing us to be part of your life every time you share with us your prayer request. It's always a great honor to pray for you and see those prayers being answered. So how do we pray? Fervently and with joy. Let us all pray. Heavenly Father, we come before your grace throne today and we are so privileged. We are so blessed, O God, to see our prayers being answered because we know that you are good, you are faithful, and that your mercy is new every morning. Father, we lift up to you the needs of your people today and we are believing that whatever we ask for in prayer, as we believe, we will receive it in Jesus' name. Lord, for Sister Josephine Lanzuela, we pray, O God, that you will cause her blood sugar to normalize and that you will cause her cholesterol level, O oh God, to also be in normal state. Father, we thank you for completely restoring her body in its original strength and condition. Thank you also, God, for healing her stomach pain. Thank you that by the wounds of Jesus, Sister Josephine has been healed. We also thank you, God, for Sister Romina Pahel. Lord, right now that they are in lockdown in Sydney, we pray, Lord, that you will continue to strengthen their spirit, O oh God. Let their hope be placed in your name, Lord God, knowing that you are the God of all hope. You are the God of all comfort. Father, we pray that you will cause them, O oh God, to grow in their faith, to just put their trust in you, Lord God, and to find peace in your presence. Thank you, Lord, for keeping them safe and protected, and thank you for keeping them strong and healthy. Keep Keep them, Father God, safe inside the shadow of your wings. And God, I pray that whatever anxieties or sickness, O oh God, that they are feeling right now, Lord, you will remove all of those things. And in the powerful name of Jesus, you will give them peace and you will cause them to receive restoration. Father, we thank you as well that they'll be able to sleep well at night, knowing that you are always by their side, never leaving them nor forsaking them. And Father, we also thank you that you will give them a good night's sleep. As your word says, you give good sleep to your beloved. And also, Father, we pray for Sister Jocelyn. Thank you, God, that you will continue to bring strength upon their bodies, O oh God, and let her whole family, her whole household come to a knowledge of you. Thank you, Lord, that salvation will come upon her family in Jesus' name, that your goodness will bring them in that place of repentance. We also thank you, God, for Sister Beatriz de Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you will keep her travel to Canada by next month, Lord God, safe and virus-free. Thank you that you will command your angels concerning her to guard her in all her ways in the name of Jesus. And lastly, Father, for Ian, thank you, God, for completely healing his mom. And thank you for always keeping his whole family safe and protected. Thank you, Jesus, for answering the needs of your people. We love you, we honor you, and we give you praise and glory that you alone deserves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope to see you again tomorrow for another time of prayer. Thank you for joining us today and we're looking forward to having you join us again tomorrow for another episode of Senior Moments to Remember. Now before we go, we'd like to remind you, you are special to God. He's working things out for your good. And whatever it is that you may have lost, whatever it is that man or the devil may have taken from you, God is a God who restores. And He will restore things to you doublefold. God is the God who is twice as much. That is how wonderful and how good He is. 
So keep holding on to the Lord. Keep your hope in the Lord. Keep calling on to the Lord. Let's close in prayer. Father, thank you so much, God, for your goodness. Thank you for our time together. Thank you for wrapping your arms around my brother and my sister. Let them just be filled with your love, filled with your goodness. And I pray that this day, O oh God, will be a day of joy, a day, Lord, that is blessed because your presence is with them. Guide them continually. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, and we'll see you again tomorrow in Senior Moments to Remember. Moments to Remember Moments to Remember Moments to Remember